Was it worth upgrading the suspension over getting a new bike? Absolutely. I just finished the North Star California downhill series, looking for every second I could find. I did start the season off on my downhill bike, but I knew my enduro bike would be faster. With a few tweaks, call it a leap of faith, I knew that I could turn my Kona Process 153 into a mini downhill rig. I'd like to keep this video focused, so I'll put links in the description on good reviews of the Fox 38, the DHX2, Maxxis Asagai, Maxxis Dissector, and a great video talking about tire compounds. More importantly, I'd like to add in a point of reference for the trails that I usually ride, which may help with other reviews I've done on bikes and parts. The trails around here are most of the time hard pack, loose over hard, blown out loose over hard, rocky rooty technical sections, and this setup may be way overkill for your normal trail riding. We're looking to ride as fast as possible with the most performance and control with having that do-all bike or one bike budget in mind. If we're to put this on some sort of sliding scale, a bike that could make it down a downhill run, 140, 150 mil, a bike that still pedals well, but smashes downhill runs, 160, 180 mil travel, and who cares about pedaling efficiency and riding trails, we just ride downhill, get yourself a downhill rig and call it a day. Starting with the Fox 38, why not a 36? I raced a 36 for years, zero complaints, phenomenal fork, but with a little weight difference, not a big price difference, I'm glad I got to try the 38. The extra volume, larger stanchions, beefier lo lowers, really did offer like a solid, confident feel. I'm 185 pounds, I did go 10 pounds less air pressure, one less token, a few clicks less compression and rebound to slow it down. This, I think the factory settings were perfect for trail riding, but this is race pace. We're going all out and I needed to slow that suspension down just a little bit. It took me about four laps to get to single clicks and really get to a place where I felt I had the suspension just perfect on washboard berms, blasting through rocks, really opening up the bike and feeling comfortable at higher speeds. The pressure release valves on the forks is an absolute must for shuttling or all day lift assist. The newly designed Fox DHX2 was a must to go with the 38. Fox was recommending for 185 pounds, I think it was a 400 to 425 pound spring. I went with a 475 pound spring. I knew there was gonna be big drops, huge senders, and just having to blast those rocky rooty sections. That feeling of nervousness or having to ride the brakes is gone. The Kona Process 153 is a phenomenal bike, but at higher speed, higher consequence, I was feeling a bit nervous or riding the brakes. Once I had the suspension dialed in, all of those issues were gone. I was just focusing on the performance, control, laser focused line choice, and just letting the bike do the work. Finally, the last two upgrades. I've been running a DHF over six years. Absolutely love it, have given it great reviews, but on a practice lap in the open channel between the center knobs and side, I slashed the tire, completely destroyed my mental game. I've ridden the Asagai on my trail bike for about a year and knew that these channel knobs would one, give me pre precise turning. We're on a DHF, the center to side knobs. There's that open channel, we call that the no-go zone. You either need to be somewhat balancing or into the corner or it might wash on you. So the Asagai did two things, one, mentally gave me a little bit of hope that I wouldn't get that channel puncture. And two, not having to have such precise cornering and really choose every corner with the degree of turning that I wanted to do. I think the Asagai helped with that. Practice day two, 
I tore open the side casing of my Maxxis Dissector Max Grip double down tire. Went back to the shop hoping they'd have a DH casing. They did, I got the Maxxis Dissector Max Grip downhill casing, threw it on, went back the next day to squeeze in some practice laps on race day. Uh, first two laps, I felt like I had to get up to speed and I think the tire needed to just be broke in a little bit. Once it was broke in, I was blasting my Strava times without going 100%. But most importantly, I've heard of damping characteristics of tire compounds. I've never experienced it. I've never really looked into it, but now I can talk about it. So the DH casing or softer compound related to 10 to 15 percent more compression dampening or suppleness it felt like i had a longer travel bike so the downhill casing or softer compounds related to the dampening characteristics of the tire adding to the suppleness or compression dampening of the bike if that makes sense it felt better and it felt like i had not only the expected more grip, but a more supple suspension. I think any one of these upgrades would be noticeable. All of them together, I feel like I have a new bike. I ran the GoPro down one of the last practice laps of race day. Good example of the conditions, rock, rooty, loose over hard, really letting the bike open up and allowing me to focus on where I wanted to be and what I wanted the bike to do. As always, thanks for hanging, like and subscribe, and I'll see y'all later. See, that's the line right there. Hey, it's pedally, brother. Yeah, it is. Get it, brother. It's good to see you, dude.